So in psych evaluations, <laughs> it's a good way to start a talk, isn't it? If you're ever having a psychological evaluation, there is a question that they will ask you, and it goes something like this. Do you think God is communicating with you directly? Do you sometimes feel like you are getting special messages just for you from the radio or billboards? <laughs> I have learned in my many years of experiences with these evaluations to alter my answer just a titch. <laughs> no, of course not. Because of course something is communicating with us. And it's absolutely not crazy to think so. Now, naturally, if the messages are telling you to hurt people, or that they're saying that you're Big Bird and you're Emperor of the Planet Twinkie, yes, get help. Talk to somebody about that. But if the messages you're getting are the kind that I'm getting, you're doing fine. Messages of guidance, messages of encouragement, messages that seem to show up right on time. And when I listen and I pay attention, I get information that I need. And it's a co Incidents. People think that, well, not people, let me clarify that because I don't think anybody in this room thinks it, but some people, generally people, think that a coincidence and an accident are the same thing. And I'm just going to stand up here and say this because I can. There are no accidents. Accidents, uh, the word accident, is the excuse that we make for not being present for when we're not focused on the moment that we're in. Think about it for a minute. The times that we've stumbled or bumped into something or left our wallet at the cash register or left a door open or the keys in the car, in the car door, or whatever. These are moments when we're unconscious. And even a car accident is usually the result of someone or everyone just not being present for the moment and bam, something happens. It's our mind drifting. And so a coincidence is the universe responding to our call to be guided, even when we don't remember making the call. Every day in every moment, we are co-operating, we are co-creating, we are co-existing with the universe. So naturally, there's going to be coincidences taking place because it's teamwork. It's a big teamwork experience. So the word coincidence or coincidence, is defined as a remarkable concurrence of events or circumstances without apparent causal connection. But I like the second definition better, a correspondence in nature. Isn't that awesome? It's like two things that are supposed to find each other that do. So sometimes it seems it can be trivial. Like, um, there are people that I've talked to who say, oh, whenever I look at the clock, it says 9-11, or 1-11, or 11-11. For me, whenever I look at a clock, it's 9-17. My dad left the planet on September 17th. So I look at a clock, 9-17, hey, dad, thanks for checking in. Um, and sometimes it can be a much deeper experience, like if you've ever felt the call of someone, like suddenly on your heart, someone you love, you feel them. And you pick up the phone and you go, man, I was just thinking about you. And they need you in that moment. They needed support or they needed love. Those, those are very deep experiences, especially when we ignore them. Because then we find out later, ah, I should have picked up the phone. And then sometimes it can be a series of small pokes from the universe because some of us can be a little bit stubborn in our uh, waking up and the universe has to be a little more persistent about getting our attention. So before I knew that Spirit Stone was going to be for real and before we even had a name, I was in New York City and um, I was interpreting my sister's show. And while I was there, it turned out that this group that I had connected with on Facebook called Believe Out Loud just happened to be having a gathering to meet people. It's this great group on Facebook. You should check them out. Their mission is to get every church in America to be not only welcoming, not only tolerant, but inclusive and welcoming. So not just, yeah, you can come, but we want you here. And so they have a great mission, and they're doing wonderful, wonderful work. So when I found out that this thing was just happened to be happening, I went and didn't know anybody there. And it was a little nerve-wracking, but I walked in and two amazing things happened. The first was I started meeting people and 
discovered like someone there was grew up one block from where I grew up in Shaker Heights, Ohio. And someone else um, was also from my hometown. And someone else went to the church that I attended in Cleveland. And someone else had a son who was graduating from the high school I went to. And so the, in this room of people I didn't know were all these connections. The amazing coincidence that took place was I was talking with this gentleman. And he said, well, what church are you affiliated with? And I opened my mouth <laughs> to speak. And what came out was... Oh, I'm opening up my own center as soon as I get back to Anchorage in a month. <laughs> and I stopped for a second, sort of checked myself, and went, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so after that, I walked out of that place and I thought, is that what I'm doing? And I got my iPod out, and I put it on shuffle, and I put my, ear, you know, my earbuds in, and I said, okay, universe, okay, God, if that's what I'm doing, talk to me about it. Tell me about it. And I had, like, 30 blocks to walk. So I was like, all right, here we go. And I hit the go button, and five songs in a row, bam, 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 all affirming. Seek and you shall find. Follow your heart's desire. The little church, song after song after song. <laughs> To the point where I was like laughing out loud, which is not uncommon on the streets of New York City. <laughs> so no one really took notice, but I was like, okay, okay, spirit, I give, I give, I get it. So the universe is really well organized. It's just really well organized. With the exception of the warthog, I always like to say that the warthog is just its own special creation. Kind of, I don't know, if you've ever really looked at one, God bless them. I just love the warthog. Um, but everything, without being predestined, yeah, without, without it being predestined or set in stone, the universe works like a really well-oiled machine. So, so again, so there are no accidents. The system is designed for everything to be interconnected and for us in our moments of awakeness to discover those connections. For example, it was no coincidence that as soon as I started working on this talk, stories of coincidence just flying at me. And I didn't tell anybody I was doing this. You know, I just was working on my talk quietly. But people were like, oh, you'll never believe what happened to me the other day. Or, oh, my God, guess who just called me? And it was just story after story after story. And I thought, man, when you awake to something, it's like a magnet. It just finds you. And there were people running into folks like, I hadn't thought of them for years, and then I thought of them, and I saw them at the grocery store. Or my beloved chiropractor who ran into somebody at the gym who happened to be just the exact person that he needed to meet to pursue the next phase of his dream. Very excited about that. Um, my friend who was worried about how she was going to pay the rent, and this check showed up that she didn't even know she was going to get exactly the amount of the rent. Having just the right thing happen at just the right moment. And it's ridiculous how often this happens. It's happening all the time. So here's my coincidence story of the week. Are you ready? So there's a garage back behind this building. And on Thursday of a week ago, I was parked in that garage because I was interpreting. And I got back to my car. And I didn't have pockets that day. I should never not have pockets. It's kind of vital. And so I placed my phone on top of the car to put things in the car. And I said to myself out loud, and this isn't New York, so it is odd. I said to myself, Rachel, you put your phone on top of the car. Not a smart idea. Remember that you put your phone on top of the car. So I opened the car door to put my stuff in. Did I put the phone in the car? No. No, I didn't. Um, Maddie was in the car, my dog, so immediately I got a you know, tongue down my throat. I got distracted. <laughs> ah. So put everything in the car, got in the car, left from the garage over there, drove all the way around the building to 36, all the way up 36, got to Lake Otis and 36th, and realized the phone was not in the car. And I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> So I do this crazy illegal Yui. I'm driving back 
speed of light, get to the garage. I'm on the ground. Somebody had already parked in my spot, so I'm like on the ground, crawling around, seeing with my phone. It couldn't have gone far. I turn, I drive a Prius. It's not like zero to 90, you know? It's, so it's like it couldn't have gone far, and I'm crawling, and I'm looking, and nowhere, right? And I'm driving around, looking in the parking lot, nowhere. And now I start to be unkind to myself, very unkind to myself, which Maddie does not care for. So she's hiding in the back of the car, not wanting to hear me say the things that I'm saying about myself. And then I'm in a, like this total panic thinking, well, what do I do first? Okay, I've got to let Heather know. I can't. I don't have my phone. Okay, I've got to let my coworker know. Can't. Don't have my phone. How do I, how do I let anybody know what's going on? Can't. So then I'm like, okay. So I could go, where should I go? You know, and I was like in this complete freezing mode. Should I go buy a new phone? What should I do? And I thought, you know what? Take a breath. Something bigger is happening here. Go to work. Get to work. So I drove to work, and I called Heather from work, and, I, and she answers the phone, and I just went, oh, I'm sorry. First of all, the drive to work is me thinking about all the things in my phone that are irretrievable all the talk notes that I have, all my talk ideas that I have, every phone number because we don't memorize phone numbers anymore. I used to. Um, so that's all, you know, emails and pictures and, oh, I'm just torturing myself. So then I just like, stop, 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 stop. So I get to work, I call Heather, and I just go, hi. And she said, Ann Lazenby has your phone. <laughs> Ann Lazenby works clear across campus in the Rasmussen Hall building, if you know this campus at all. Clear across campus. And I said, how in the world does Ann have my phone? And she said, I don't know. You're going to have to call her. So I call her, and Ann said, well, this is an interesting story. <laughs> so apparently after I drove off and my phone flew... A guy named Keith, who works for UAA, was street sweeping the parking lot of the arts building, saw my phone, got out of the street sweeping vehicle, picked up my phone. Now, my phone is set to lock after two minutes, and my phone was not locked. I don't know how he found Anne in my phone or chose Anne. She's not in my emergency contact. Now, we have no idea how he knew or found her, but he found her, called her, and so, of course, she saw my phone come up, and she was like, yeah, and she hears this man's voice, this is Keith. <laughs> do you know who owns this phone? And she's like, yes, I do. <laughs> he then brings the phone to her, clear across campus. There's not a scratch on it. It's not cracked. There's nothing wrong with it. And I said to her, that's impossible, because my phone locks. And she says, well, your phone's not locking. And I said... Are you serious? Because it locks after two minutes. And she said, I'm going to look at it. The phone was locked. So I half expected, I wanted to call, well, I, call, I did call. I called UAA to thank Keith, and I half expected them to say, there's no Keith that works here. <laughs> you know, or there was a Keith, but he died. You know, it's like I expected, you know. I was like, I'm like, the best punchline of the story would have been no Keith. As it turns out, there is a Keith, and he was very grateful that I said thank you, and I was grateful to him, and, and all that. So it was like the, all these things kind of flowed, and, and, you know, several people were like, oh, you shouldn't be so reliant on your phone, and I was like, you know, no, I shouldn't put my phone on the, hood of, on the roof of my car, is what I should do. Unconsciousness, unconsciousness. So it's, it's all about being awake when everything falls into place. Keith was awake, thank goodness, you know, and, and everything came into it. So, so along with, like, everybody having probably eight to ten personal stories of the amazing coincidences in their lives. It's clearly a universal experience that we have. And there are so many books and so many movies that have utilized this concept and that keep teaching us and taking us to that deeper awakening of truth. So, of course, naturally, I picked three. So, of course, Cloud Atlas that we've talked about extensively and watched is a great example of the intertwining coincidence and network of our lives. And then Magnolia and Crash both utilize the same idea of stories of an ensemble of group of people whose lives bypass each other and overlap each other. Magnolia came out first, and if you have no uh, issues with strong language, I highly recommend it. It's a 
powerful movie. And it, the whole opening of the movie talks about things can't be a coincidence. It can't be an accident. It's got to be some kind of divine connection. And then, of course, Crash does the same idea. And, and, then, and then I didn't take a picture of it because it's just so embarrassing that I keep bringing it up. But um, So I was watching Lost again. Um, and so here's the coincidence with that. I'd been watching season five just randomly. I put it on when I do other stuff. I do laundry and there's Lost or I, whatever. So I'd been watching season five and, and suddenly I just got kind of restless. I'm like, ah, oh, season five's not doing it for me. I'm going to switch to season three. So this is this past Friday. So I switched to season three and got it on in the background and I'm not really listening until I hear John Locke say, don't confuse coincidence with fate. And I thought, there it is. There it is. We can call it whatever we want. We can call it an accident. We can call it fate. We can call it a coincidence. We can call it a, oh, imagine that happening. The fact is it's happening. It's happening all over the place. And so when we are awake and paying attention, we can consistently see how we are brought together intentionally. The universe knows what it's doing. It knows what it's doing. So there's this great story I came across about Robert Lincoln, who was Abe's um, son who, like, he, he lost a couple sons, and so Robert was the son that lived. And he was uh, an adult, he was an amazing human being. And he was waiting to board a train, and he was standing on the, the platform, and there was a bunch of people, and they were getting really boisterous, and he got pushed up against the train, and the train started to move. And he was going to get twisted and dropped into that space between the train and the platform until somebody from behind him reached out, grabbed his jacket, and yanked him back. He even he reported that it was violent, how he was like, boom, pulled back. The man who saved Robert didn't know who he had saved. But Robert Lincoln turned and knew who had saved him. And he was always really grateful for this amazingly courageous act. The night that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, Robert chose not to go to the theater. And that night, of course, John Wilkes Booth changed history. But years earlier, on that train platform, John's brother Edwin, who, is, who was the most brilliant Shakespearean actor of our time here, was the one who grabbed Robert's jacket and saved his life. Their families intertwined. I thought that was an awesome story. It's much longer and it's much more dramatic, but that was nutshell. So, so thinking about that, we are here by divine appointment. Edwin Booth was there by divine appointment. And Abraham Lincoln was where he was by divine appointment. And so whether we know it or not, or whether we're conscious or not, there is no moment to miss in our lives because every moment we're here by divine appointment. And sometimes things happen when we need them to, even when we're not sure that we need or want them to. When Heather and I first moved to California, I was really excited to be doing nothing because I'd had many years here in Anchorage where I was interpreting and I was serving at, my, at the Alaska Center and I was doing, doing, going, going, going and never stopping. And we moved to California and I was unemployed, not interpreting and had no center to go to. I had nowhere to go. I had nothing to do. It was awesome. It was so great. <laughs> I got to walk the dogs and do nothing. And, um, but after about a couple months of that, I started getting a little itchy. <laughs> I was like, there's like 20,000 spiritual centers in this town, and I'm not going to any of them. And so I just started, started thinking, I want to serve. I want to do something. And out of nowhere, of course, I get this email from Ray Jordan who says, hey, I'm doing this burning bowl ceremony thing on New Year's Eve. Do you want to come play music for it? I said, sure. So it was in Alameda. It was across the bridge at this adorable church called the Home of Truth, this sweet little building with this little garden room in the back. And I'm walking into the garden, and there in the garden is a statue of Brother Francesco. I'm like, I'm supposed to be here. Awesome. You know, and I go in, and I do music for this burning bowl ceremony. I don't know anybody there, but I meet this woman 
who says, hey, why don't you and Heather come to our house for a New Year's Day brunch? We're doing a New Year's Day brunch. Don't know her at all, but sure. Okay, so she gives us directions. New Year's Day comes. We go to their house for brunch. There's all these people there. We're meeting all these different people, and I meet this gentleman named John who says, hey, you know, tomorrow morning I'm speaking at the Center of Truth, uh, the Home of Truth, and um, I, I don't have anybody to do music for me. Would you want to play music for me tomorrow morning? <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, I don't know him. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know the church. I don't know the people. And Heather goes, she'd love to. <laughs> she'd love to. How many songs do you need? I'm like, oh, yes, I'd love to. The next morning I come, I do music for John. I meet the folks at Home of Truth. And I then am invited to do music again. And then I'm invited to speak. And for the following eight, nine, ten months, I spoke every month there. I did music there. I was invited to become part of their family. And in addition, John also connected me with a center in San Francisco where I ended up doing music once a month. It was divine appointment each moment was divine appointment. So I get it. These are all great stories, and it's all lovely. And sometimes it's a challenge to trust. It's always that trust walk. It's... Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So it's a trust walk. (laughs) And sometimes it's it's a challenge to do that, and we... We can only do what we can do. We can only trust as much as we can trust. And so if we trust that the universe is conspiring for our good all the time, no matter what it looks like, even when it looks like it's not doing that, then we can discover things that are worthy of our attention. We can find out things that we need to know. We find out that there's a reason for us to be. We find out that there's a reason that we're here a reason for us just to simply be. And a lot of times this stuff will happen because we're seeking. When, Like we do better when we're putting out the feelers of I'm seeking as opposed to when we're just kind of unconsciously rolling along. However, sometimes it's good to get unconscious. So it's a little bit of both. However, when we're seeking, when we're putting the energy out, it's good. So I'm going to want to share a little story. You probably know it. Play along. So there's this little boy, and he decides that he wants to meet God. And so he, in the morning, packs his book bag. He's got Twinkies. He's got root beer. And he starts off on his journey to meet God. And he'd walked about 30 blocks, and he came to a park, and he was a little tired, and he was a little thirsty. So he sat down, and he got out a Twinkie, and he got out some root beer. And he noticed that there was an old woman, an elderly woman, on the bench near him who was feeding the pigeons. And he kind of looked at her and smiled. She looked at him and smiled. And he thought maybe... She'd like a Twinkie. So he offered her a Twinkie. And she smiled this huge smile. And he loved that smile. So then he thought, well, maybe she'd smile if I gave her a root beer. So he gives her a root beer. And she smiles again. And so he's thrilled. So they sit there all afternoon eating Twinkies and root beer and not talking, just sitting there. And it started to get dark, and the boy realized he had to go, so he got up and started to leave. But he got only a few steps away, and he turned around, and he ran back, and he gave her a big hug. And the biggest smile of all came to her face. So he runs home, and he gets home, and his mom says, Wow, what did you do today that made you so happy? And he said, I had lunch with God. And she has the most amazing smile. (laughs) The elderly woman got home, and her son looked at her, and he, he said, Mom, you look so peaceful. What did you do today? And She said, I had Twinkies in the park with God, and he's much younger than I expected. <laughs> so I'd like to close with this. That was the one I skipped. I skipped that one. Everything happens for a reason. Maybe you don't see the reason right now, but when it is finally relieved, revealed, it will blow you away. I love that slide. So I'm going to close with this quote from Rachel Naomi Remen. Life offers its wisdom generously. Everything teaches. Not everyone learns.
Life asks the same thing we have been asked in every class. Stay awake. Pay attention. But paying attention is no simple matter. It requires us not to be distracted by expectations, past experiences, labels, and masks. It asks that we not jump to early conclusions and that we remain open to surprise. Amazing things happen when we awake to them and when we allow for them, and even sometimes when it seems that they're not even possible. The universe is truly conspiring for our good all the time. Truly. Let's do some praying. Oh, taking a breath, a grateful, grateful breath. And it's that grateful breath because we're here and we can do it. So I, for one, am certainly grateful for this inhale and this exhale. And so what I know to be true right now is that whatever is happening in anyone's life, my life, everyone here in this room, anyone in this city, state, the globe, everything that is taking place right now, no matter what it looks like, is by divine appointment. There are no accidents. So the realities that we are seeing have been created by consciousness and realities that we have accepted before them, and now we get to change them. Now we get to say, I consciously choose to change my reality, to shift my reality. I consciously get to say, I am open to coincidence. I am open to spirit, doing spirit's thing in my life all the time, every moment. And so if that means a shift in relationship, a shift in health, a shift in finances, no matter what that shift is, I'm open. Because I know that no matter what it looks like, there's good in it because the universe only conspires for our good. The universe wants to recreate itself over and over and over again. And so that, that is what people call a miracle. And yet it's not miraculous at all. It's simply the universe, God, oneness, love, the thing, the thing itself, all the names for it, that creative energy, creative force, it's that thing doing what it does, constantly creating, constantly creating. And so we meet who we need to meet right when we meet them. And we let go of who we let go of right when we need to let go of them. And good things and not so good things and everything, everything under the sun is possible. And so as Rumi says in his poem, The Guest House, we welcome all of it. We welcome all of it. The joy, the pain, the malice, the bliss, they're all guides. And we welcome all. And so with deep gratitude, I thank this stone for the work that it does. And I thank the universe for every single gift. Blessings. Amen. Ashe. Ah,